The Pug by George W. Fisher The true origin of this peculiar breed of dogs is unknown. Some naturalists believe that the pug and the mastiff are closely related. Indeed, the close resemblance between the two breeds gives the theory considerable force. Other naturalists infer that a dwarf mastiff may possibly have been mated with a bulldog, and that they were the parents of the first pug. The latter theory has certainly a great deal in its favor, for the reason that so many of the pugs have the rose ear, are undershot, out at elbows, and some have black breasts with white legs and feet, all characteristics of the bulldog. The latest theory is that the pug is the result of a cross between the bulldog and the Japanese spaniel. To my mind, the pug shows no evidence of such a cross, either in shape, color, or disposition. The first pugs were doubtless bred in England, but further than this, it is doubtful if the true origin of the breed will ever be known. We know that everything, whether animate or inanimate, is of some particular utility and has some purpose to serve, and so the pug, whatever his origin, doubtless is here for a purpose. While perhaps he is of no value as a hunter, yet his gentle disposition and good temper render him invaluable as a companion for children and as a pet for the fair sex. Indeed, it seems that his special mission is to be a companion to the little ones. His chief delight and pleasure is to frolic and romp with them. They may pull, bite, and whip him with impunity, and he never resents their assaults. He has never been known to go mad or to become ill-tempered, as do many other dogs when they grow old. As for cleanliness, he is unequaled. He can repose on silk or satin without leaving behind him that disagreeable smell so common to dogs of other breeds. He can also be utilized to a certain extent as a watchdog. He's a close observer, and scarcely anything escapes his watchful eye. One characteristic of the pug which seems to command attention everywhere is his aristocratic nature. His dignified carriage and haughty manner are proofs of his aristocracy, besides the fact that he is owned and caressed by the kings and queens, the lords and ladies, and by people of every class who endeavor to possess him on account of his affectionate lovable and intelligent nature. Another characteristic is that he bears confinement in the house better than almost any other breed. It can also be said that he is the only sweet-skinned animal in the whole canine race, and this fact, combined with his smooth, glossy coat, makes him a desirable pet for the carriage and drawing room. Mr. Morrison, a prominent English fancier, took more pains in cultivating this breed in his day than any other breeder. Yet Lord Willoughby Daresby claimed a strain from a totally different source. The Morrison pug is of a yellow fawn color, with a distinct trace from occiput to tail, while the Willoughby is a stone fawn with a black saddle. There is no breed that has been bred more carefully and that has been improved so much in the last ten years as has the pug. The long-legged and muzzled pug is now replaced by the handsome little cobby fellow of an entirely different type. I am perfectly safe in saying that the pug requires more care in breeding than does any other breed. There are so many difficult points to perfect and overcome, and such a strong tendency in the breed to revert from approved types, that the greatest care and watchfulness are necessary to prevent this. The most important point of all is to first select a good sire, get the best that is obtainable, be careful that he possesses the essential points such as the hereditary transmission of character and disposition. This is one of nature's most important laws. Strains are only properly sustained in their purity by breeding to the best stock that can be had. In selecting a sire, never breed to a long-legged one. Limit his weight to 15 pounds if possible. It is much easier to find a good large pug than a good small one. The bitch usually comes in season when eight months old, and after she has attained that age, generally comes in season twice a year. As soon as she gives evidence of coming in season, remove her to a warm room on the second or third floor. If possible, give her a companion, either a playful puppy or an old bitch. This will keep her from fretting, and will keep her in good cheer and humor during her confinement. The confinement usually lasts about 21 days, and a cheerful companion doubtless adds to the number of her puppies. The bitch should be bred on the twelfth day after the first signs are given. One service is sufficient, and more than two should never be given. These should be twenty-four hours apart. 
she should whelp in sixty to sixty-three days. During her pregnancy, the breeder should take particular care to give the bitch a sufficient amount of exercise. The more she is left in the open air, the better it will be for her and her offspring. There's no definite way of ascertaining until 21 days have passed whether or not she is in whelp. About 10 days before she is due to whelp, rid her of fleas, if she has them, by an application of insect powder. I consider a well-tanned sheepskin with the wool on the best bed for a bitch to whelp on. Care must be taken to have it well tacked in a tight box. The puppies will be born one after another at intervals of a quarter to three quarters of an hour. During this time, allow nothing whatever to disturb her. Keep her warm and quiet, and as soon as she is through, remove her and puppies to clean, dry quarters. Restrict her food for the first ten days to sweet milk, boiled rice, oatmeal, and meat broth. After that time has elapsed, she may be fed of any kind of suitable food. She should be allowed free access to open air and yard for exercise, etc. Puppies should be taken from the bitch when five weeks old. The important process of rearing pug puppies should begin when they are three weeks old. They should be taken separately and placed to a dish containing two-thirds milk and one-third warm water, adding a little sugar. By touching their lips to the mixture, they will instinctively begin to lap it with an apparent appreciation. This process should be continued three times a day for the space of ten days, and at the expiration of that time, they can be given pure milk and meat broth thickened with wheat bread, boiled rice, and oatmeal. They should frequently be given bones to gnaw it, which exercise acts admirably as a toothbrush. A careful effort should be made to avoid overloading their stomachs. Never allow food to remain in their dishes. When they have attained the age of six or seven weeks, they are old enough to sell. At this time, it is also well to rid them of worms. This can be accomplished by giving each puppy ten grains of camellia on an empty stomach. This will expel all worms in three hours, without any danger to the dog. In three days, repeat the dose. This precaution has saved many a puppy for me. To prepare the pug for the show bench, he should be washed once a week with pure Castile soap and should be groomed every day with a soft brush. It will add greatly to his appearance to rub his coat freely with the hands. His food should consist of boiled meat, rice, and oatmeal. By adding a tablespoonful of ground flax seed and raw egg twice a week, a marvelous effect will be produced on his coat, and it will at the same time regulate his bowels. Let it be remembered that outdoor exercise is as essential as good food. The pug is, of course, subject to the same diseases as other dogs, and their symptoms are the same. The following remedies I have prescribed and used in my kennel with great success. For worms, give ten grains of camellia on an empty stomach. Repeat in three days. This will expel pin, tape, and stomach worms without danger. For fit. If caused by worms, give the camellia as above. If caused by teeth or distemper, give 20 grains of bromide potash every three hours. For distemper, take saltpeter, 60 grains, sulfur, 60 grains, aloes, 20 grains. Mix and put in 12 powders. Give one powder each day. Avoid giving open-air exercise. Keep them in a separate room at a temperature of about 60 degrees. Tonic. For loss of appetite or to tone up the system after distemper or other disease, take quinine, 12 grains, extract gentian, 12 grains, extract nux vomica, 1 grain, mix and make in 12 pills. Give one pill morning and evening. Mange. Take sulfur, 2 ounces, saltpeter, 1 half ounce, cosmoline, 4 ounces. Mix and apply to parts affected by rubbing well. Wash it off in 24 hours, then cover the dog completely with cool oil and allow it to remain on for 12 hours, then wash him with Castile soap. Repeat in 5 days, if not thoroughly cured. The Standard Symmetry, value 10, size 5, condition 5, body 10, legs 5, feet 5, Head, five. Muzzle, five. Ears, five. Eyes, ten. 
mask, five, wrinkles, five, tail, five, trace, five, coat, five, color, five, general carriage, five, total, 100. Acknowledged points, symmetry. Symmetry in general appearance, decidedly square and cobby. A lean leggy pug and a dog with short legs and a long body are equally objectionable. Size and condition. The pug should be multum imparvo, but this condensation, if the word may be used, should be shown by compactness of form, well-knit proportions, and hardness of developed muscle. Weight to be from 13 to 17 pounds, dog or bitch. Body, short and cobby, wide in chest, and well ribbed up. Legs, very strong, straight, of moderate length, and well under. Feet, neither so long as the foot of the hare, nor so round as that of a cat. Well split up toes, and the nails black. Muzzle, short, blunt, square, but not up-faced. Head, large, massive, round, not apple-headed with no indentation of the skull. Eyes, dark in color, very large, bold and prominent, globular in shape, soft and salacious in expression, very lustrous, and when excited, full of fire. Ears, thin, small, soft, like black velvet. There are two kinds, the rose and button. Preference is given to the latter. Markings, Clearly defined, the muzzle or mass, ears, moles on cheeks, thumb mark, or diamond on forehead. Back trace should be as black as possible. Mask. The mask should be black. The more intense and well-defined it is, the better. Wrinkles. Large and deep. Trace. A black line extending from the occiput to the tail. Tail. Curled tightly as possible over the hip. The double curl is perfection. Coat. Fine, smooth, soft, short, glossy, neither hard nor woolly. Color. Silver or apricot fawn. Each should be decided to make the contrast complete between the color and the trace and mask. Among the many breeders of good pugs in this country, we may mention the following. Dr. M. H. Cryer, 1527 Arch Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. George W. Fisher, Cottawasa, Pennsylvania. A. E. Pitts, Columbus, Ohio. Everhart Pug Kennels, 212 Main Street, Cincinnati, Ohio. J. H. Bowden, 296 West 12th Street, New York City. C. W. Boger, 1939 Kamek Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Miss L. Linden, 214 West 45th Street, New York City. Acme Kennels, 413 Chestnut Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. J.J. Lynn, Port Huron, Michigan. Miss M. E. Bannister, Cranford, New Jersey. Mrs. Charles Wheatley, 129 East 16th Street, New York City. Mrs. S. C. Barnum, 329 Lexington Avenue, New York City. E. D. Bruce, 17th Street and Broadway, New York City. Mrs. M. A. Cunningham, 412 West 45th Street, New York City. R. Schreier, 365 First Avenue, New York City. C. E. Osborne, Stepney, Connecticut. Mrs. J. F. Campbell, Custom House, Montreal, Canada. Miss J. A. Yard, 2 West 43rd Street, New York City. Roger Harrison, 84 Cherry Street, New York City. L. A. Redizel, 158 Gay Street, Baltimore, Maryland. G. W. Wambach, 2 North Liberty Street, Baltimore, Maryland. William J. Bryson, 204 Dearborn Street, Chicago. Miss A. B. Van Horn, 180 Penn Avenue, Allegheny, Pennsylvania. J. A. Lawson, 263 East Broad Street, Columbus, Ohio. L. S. Hudson, Lansing, Michigan. A. F. German, Louisville, Kentucky. Mrs. J. Smith, 7 McLean Court, Boston, Massachusetts. Miss A. H. Whitney, Lancaster, Massachusetts. W. A. Peck, New Haven, Connecticut. E. E. Parnell, Spencer, Iowa. 
Dr. S. Plant, 18 Traverse Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Miss Grace M. Hall, Portland, Maine. R. T. Harrison, 84 Cherry Street, New York City. Seminole Kennels, Chestnut Hill, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. George H. Hardy, 10 Coleman Street, Cincinnati, Ohio. R. T. Prout, Newark, Ohio. J. C. Nims, Plainsville, Ohio.